what's up real ones so welcome back to the channel today i'm going to be going over like a 2021 arsenal review and things that i'm applying to my arsenal this year to try to break out of my comfort zone a little bit so what i need you guys to do is subscribe to the channel go down there hit that like button comment what you want to see coming up in the future and stick with it to start off with rod selection generally getting into fishing i recommend like a seven foot to seven three medium heavy to a heavy action just because you want something that is all around capable for anything um and if you actually look online you can find a shakespeare it is an agility it's a seven foot medium heavy that comes with a six to uh, six two to one gear ratio bait caster um, I bought this a few years ago, and it's been coming in clutch for me ever since. I'm not one of those people that go spend thousands of dollars on gear anymore. I don't, you know, I mean, I understand you do pay for quality, but at the same time, not everyone has $700 to go buy a brand new DC reel and another $700 to pair that with the top of the line reel. So this one here, again, I bought it at Dick's Sporting Goods, and it's been coming in clutch for me ever since. Um... I don't have any problems with it really you know i pair that up with uh, i don't go any higher than like 15 pound line on here now i've got 12 pound mono um it does have a little bit of stretch in there but it gives you give for like any of your jerk baits crank baits anything like with treble hooks to where you don't want to yank it out of their mouth it has a little stretch so it helps with that so that comes in clutch now if you want to get on a little little higher end i've got a brett chapman reel here this is a seven two to one gear ratio I've got that paired up on the Berkley Amp 7 foot 3 heavy action rod. I got this on a um, 60 pound braid. This would be for whopper ploppers like I got tied on here or a topwater frog and stuff like that. Something where you really need to drive that hook in. And even if you want to flip around some thick cover, you know, brush piles, thick grass, mats, anything like that, this comes in clutch. It gives you enough leverage to where you can yank them out of pretty much any scenario. I haven't had any problems with this. It's a pretty stout rod, pretty good solid rod. Um, and the reel itself is, I've had no problems with it. It casts like butter. It's beautiful. I love it. So I recommend either of those. Again, 7 foot, um, medium heavy Shakespeare agility rod. You can get it for under 60 bucks. And that combo there, it's, I mean, it's a couple dollars. But once you get more into it, that's why I say you do pay for the quality. Also, I do a lot of ultralight fishing, and that would be this setup here. This is the South Bend Micro Light Rod. I believe I picked this up for like $22. Um, hands down, one of the best bets, like best deals I've gotten in fishing so far. Um, I've caught, you know, three, four pounders on this rod, and it has not broken on me yet. I've got six pound line on there that is fluorocarbon, a little more. Um, a little less visible for the fish that way when you're fishing those light baits you can pretty much get it right in front of their face and it's less chances of them being shy from it so now we get to move on to the fun part which everybody's here for and that's the baits that i'm going to be throwing in this year so a couple of them i have tried before you know multiple of these baits you know different variations and everything um but i'm trying to you know break out new stuff so i'd like to start off with the Guggen squad club this one is, uh, I don't even remember what color this pattern is. This is the Aurora Shad. Really nice bluegill imitation in the water to give off that flicker. Those uh, holographic colors are really nice. This is a two and a half inch. Um, it weighs a half or a half ounce, so it will sink down a decent amount, but not too crazy, but enough to where you can rip it through that grass and pull it in quickly. Really good bait to you. And if you're just getting into fishing, I would recommend using weightless worm, uh, lipless crankbait, topwater popping frog, and a spinner bait. That would probably be the biggest go-tos. And once you get a little more into it, you can start throwing jigs, which is a very simple bait to use. You just throw it out, cast it, retrieve it, and that's it. So next up on the list, got the Zoog, or Guggen's. <laughs> the Guggen Squad Zinger here. This is a half ounce bait as well. It's all white. Or the Hummer, my bad. 
this is all white as well really good top water bait you could throw a trailer on it if you need to i don't really throw trailer hooks or anything you could get away with not throwing a trailer on it but if that's how you're comfortable with using it go ahead this is really good you cast it out and just retrieve it you could vary the speed just to kind of give off the plopping action of it and everything but either way you fish it especially in like spring to mid to late summer this bait will come in clutch it will i guarantee you it'll catch you a big fish next up on the list as i was saying frogs are a really good way to get into fishing you know there's so many different ways you can fish them there's so many different variations these are the walmart brand frogs actually which for a dollar 97 it's a pretty good deal you know uh the rubber on them's really soft they're inexpensive so if you break off or lose one you're not crying over you know a nine ten dollar frog so it doesn't hurt the heart or the wallet too much but these guys will catch you a lot of fish these you can just cast out let it sit make sure when you're fishing top water you let the ripples on the water dissipate before you start acting like working it that way it gives the fish a better chance of keying in on your bait now on these you'll see that it has the open mouth on it which once you pull it through the water it'll create a bubble and that's what's going to help those fish target the area i got three of those just because i want to try them out and see how they're working um i got faith in the mini frog would do really and now once you get to the higher end spectrum of the frog scale um here is a scum frog this is the trophy series it is a walking frog so it does not give off that popping action but when you have subtle water um surfaces where there's not a lot of wind blowing and it's pretty slick and calm the walking bait will be the best one for you because it will just kind of shimmy back and forth it won't pop and create too much disturbance to scare them off this will just give them a nice subtle presentation to work on I like the pattern of this one. Um, it actually looks really cool, but again, on the top of the frog, it's not really that. That's for the angler's choice, really, just for your visual appeal, because the only thing the frogs see are the bottom of it. So the general two go-to rules are a white or a black belly frog, because they will stand out, believe it or not. Um, but this one's going to be really nice to use in the winter or summertime. Now when we get to jigs. That's where it becomes a fun little selection. As you can see here, I've got five different Bitsy jigs. They are 1 8 ounce. So it'll basically kind of help it sink down slower. It'll give you a less chance of getting jammed up in the rocks. Um, it'll let you work it a little more finesse style versus a big bulky bait that just straight hits the bottom and it pretty much drags the bottom. This will give you the ability to kind of flip a little easier. You could put little or like a smaller trailer on there and appeal to a bunch of different size fish. So the best two colors to use, black and blue. You can work them in any dirty water. It'll help the profile stand out a lot more, give them a better presentation, a better chance for them to see that bait in the water. Or something a little more natural. I like the camouflage jig here just because it kind of mimics the bluegill and stuff a lot more. And around my area, that's the forage that they feed on most. Um, again, these are 1 8 ounce. I'll generally throw like a Bitsy Bug trailer on there or a mini seed crawl. That way it's just something where you can see the pincher sticking out. And it kind of gives off that image. But a couple of the colors that I'm excited to use. This is a candy crawl. I uh, never used it, but you know, I like weird things. So this thing, I'm assuming, will catch a lot of fish. I'm hoping it does at least. And it looks like it'd be fun to use. And this one here will be just the, uh, I think this is, uh, what was it? This was a bluegill pattern, I believe. But this one here would be really solid. You know, it's just a natural color. Green pumpkin style. Got a little bit of blue in there, so it does mimic the belly of a bluegill. So, I'm feeling like these guys would definitely get off, you know, some good bites and stuff. But when it comes to jigs, you want to go, when you're first getting into it, go a little lighter. That way you can help detect the bite a lot more and you're not pulling up on that heavy weight thinking that you got a fish because of the pressure that's coming back at you. And a couple more baits. Spinner baits. These things are absolutely lethal. It's one of the best representations for bait fish you can find. Um, chatter baits are really well or good as well, but I really like spinner baits. I'm not the best with them so i kind of got these ones here again walmart brand i think each one of these cost me like two bucks really inexpensive so if you break off or lose one it's not going to hurt your wallet too much you can always go back to the store buy you a new one but the check or the white one here perfect imitation of a check or a shaft why do i keep saying chad 
perfect imitation of a shad here. This is a half ounce off or a three eighth ounce. So this one will kind of sink a little bit slower. It'll stay right above the bottom. So it basically right right above that grass that you're trying to target. And these blades here, once they rotate, it'll help imitate the school of bait fish. So those fish are actually key in on it. That flash from the sun hitting it'll help target as well. Really good. You could throw this with like a um, a mini swim bait as a trailer. People throw little crawls on there, stuff like that. Anything to just give a little more fluttery action to the back of that skirt. But again, a really good bait to start out with if you're just getting into fishing as well. And this one here, obviously bluegill pattern. It's going to mimic any of the brim you have, any sunfish, you can get red breast, anything like that. And this one has gold blades, which the spinner baits I have thrown, I love gold blades. For some reason, it, it kind of mirrors that sun a little bit more and it gives off a natural presentation better than that silver, to me at least. Just That's just my personal opinion. Everyone has their opinion. I'm not a professional, so don't take it to heart. But this is a half ounce. So it's going to sink a lot quicker, it's going to stay closer to the bottom, it will maintain a lot more contact, but if you're looking for big fish, generally those bigger fish will be a little deeper in the water column. So that bigger weight profile is definitely going to help it stay down there on the retrieve, because while you're retrieving the bait, it's going to be moving upwards, so this heavier line will help it stay down a lot more. So these two will come in clutch if you're just getting in the fishing, use those. I promise you at some point you'll catch one. You could throw a trailer hook on those. Generally you'll get a lot of short strikes on them, which it's common, so that's where that trailer hook will come in clutch. And this one here we've got the Rapala suspending jerk bait. It's a swimming depth of four to eight feet. So if you have a pocket in your like a pond, lake, anything you're fishing like that, and you don't really want to hit all the way to the bottom, but you want to get right in that middle where you find suspending fish throw a suspending jerk bait, twitch bait, anything like that. This is a jointed jerk bait, so basically when it swims, it will look like a bait fish and it'll have both parts popping. I've yet to throw anything like this. Generally, I stick, I shy away from like super expensive baits just because, you know, if I break off, I'm one of those people that's going to get upset about it. You know, I'm, I'm emotional like that. It's ridiculous. But also good. This here we have a shallow running bait, it is a shad rip, it'll only go 3 to 5 feet, so if you're targeting like bank lines, grass lines, anything like that, rock drop off, something like that, where you know you're right in that mid column, this will come in perfect clutch because it will literally ride right in there, it'll get down deep enough where you can catch fish on it and you'll maintain that bottom contact, but not so much where you're going to be snagging on things and picking up a lot of debris with it. So go and try one of these out. I've yet to try it out, but I'm hoping that maybe I could pull in something off of it this year just because they look cool. One bait that I have thrown before. I haven't thrown this exact one, but I have thrown one pretty similar to it, different color pattern, is the Flicker Shad by Berkeley. Um, they're really nice, actually. They look like if you twitch your rod tip, it will literally, it looks like a dying bait fish so well that it's ridiculous. Um, the one I have was actually, I believe it was like green and orange, which is a crazy color pattern for where I live around Cincinnati, but it, it gets the bite. So we've seen this one and I figured, you know, I'll pick it up just because it would be pretty fun, you know. Why not try new things? That's what it's all about because you never know what pattern works until you try it. And here, anybody knows anything about fishing, topwater bites are going to be your most exciting blow-ups you'll ever get. They're so explosive, you can at times get fish coming all the way out of the water just to bite it. So this here is a Yoziri 3DB popper. Um, I mean, it floats, obviously, it's a popper. I'm not sure on the color pattern here, but it looks sick. Like, the, it just looks sick. It's like a translucent green and I'm pretty sure I could pull something off of that, so I'm excited to throw that this year. I can't wait until, you know, those fish start feeding up in the warm weather because you can pretty much throw anything at them and they are going to just destroy it. And this day here, I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on it, but it, it looks like it would be fun to catch something on. So this is a crawfish, actual body jig. Normally you'll find the jigs where they look like this that are imitating the crawfish but this one here is just legit a crawfish it has an extra set of pinchers here obviously it's like a natural green pumpkin with a little bit of orange strand in there and I'm assuming this is going to catch a lot of stuff it looks 
just too soft to not catch any fish. So I'm definitely going to throw this in the spring around beds and stuff like that to see if I can pull any fish off of that. But that's exciting to me. And, and keeping that crawfish trend going. This is a jointed, or jointed paddle fin. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be like a chatterbait kind of where this black or back tail here kind of vibrates in the water as you like reel it in and stuff. You can hop it and it'll kind of give off vibration as well. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on these, but again, I wanted to pick one up to try it for myself. So we're going to have some fun throwing that around. And again, on the top water trend, here is a buzz bait. Now this color pattern just looks sick to me. Like I, I love red and black colored, you know, things just because red is a big target for bass. For some reason, they hate the color red or they love it depending on how you look at it, but you will get a lot of bites on red colored baits. Like in the winter, red colored crawfish baits, some of the biggest bites you're going to get. And this is a candy crawl buzz bait. Um, pretty much the same as the Guggen Squad Hummer. You know, you just work it, trying to vary up the retrieve style to figure out which process works best for you. But that water will actually hit that blade and rotate and it'll create like a plopping noise, which will help the bass attack it. And this is, um, I believe it's Academy brand. It's the Jawbone. But, I mean, I'm excited to use it. It just looks too soft to not get it. And here, for a lot of the jigs, I've planned on using just this here, which is the uh, Kraken Cross, which is a really good trailer, or you can Texas rig it, throw it out there just like that, playing on a hook with a weight on it. I generally go like 3 16ths of an ounce, maybe maybe a quarter ounce if you're fishing thick cover and stuff like that to help it get down in there, but you can fish these so many types of ways but this is literally a dead on impression of a crawfish once you got it out there you let it hit the bottom work it a little bit those pinchers will flip a little bit and then it, it, it'll put it in defensive mode where the bass will actually you know start to attack it they'll bite off the pinchers first generally so when you get that first nibble wait like three seconds and then you'll actually feel a hard bite and that's when you'll set the hook but these guys here are in an alabama color which is like a green top and an orange bottom which really good natural colors and i've got a lot of faith in these so i can't wait to throw these this year either so keeping that trend going with the Guggen squad base i've got a 10 inch mondo worm here these are in green pumpkin i did kind of look at them already so i took the sleeve out accidentally like an idiot um, I like to keep them in the little sleeve that it comes in because it helps keep it form. But this is a Mondo worm. This is in the watermelon red. Uh, you can throw this on a weedless hook or you can throw it out there with like, again, the 316th ounce weight. And then let it sink to the bottom. You'll get bites on this. It's a big worm. Worms are just clutch for that. Can't wait to throw these around. And if you need to go a little more finesse style, then I've got the Guggen Squad. This is the Slim Shake Worm here. You can put this on like a shaky head, um, or you can drop it around with like a Carolina rig, Texas rig, anything like that. I mean, if you need to, you could probably get away with throwing it on a net rig head. Um, haven't thrown these yet, but they look soft. You know, I've looked up a lot of reviews, a lot of videos. Everybody swears by them, so it's going to be pretty fun to throw this. This is in the uh, natural color, so it's just pretty much green pumpkin. It's got a little bit of blue flake in there, so it does help give off a little shine just so the bass, you know, to catch their eye and everything. But this looks pretty soft. Can't wait to use it. I'm assuming it's going to catch something, so I'm going to bring you guys on them videos as well. And then here, going along the lines of ultralight, Bobby Garland is one of the most notorious ultralight baits you can use just because they're so universal, a lot of patterns, a lot of colors, and you can find them in pretty much any store. So this one here is the opening night. This is the baby shad bait. I'll generally throw this on like a 132nd ounce jig head. I'll let open hook, no uh, weed guard or anything like that. I'll throw it out, let it sink to the bottom. You get a lot of bites. <laughs> This right here is the Itty Bitty Swimmer. I have yet to throw anything like this. I'm going to assume I'm going to need like a 164 ounce jig head just because they're so tiny. But the color pattern on them looks juice. Like I don't know if you can see it. But they look pretty soft there. So I'm excited to throw these this year. Um, this one here is the Baby Shed. This is in the uh, glow in the dark color. It doesn't have a specific color on there. I'm guessing it's Screamer. But they look pretty juiced too. Um, kind of like a neon green with a baby blue backing to it. Again, I'll throw this on a 132nd ounce jig head. 
let it sink, hit the bottom, give it a couple of switches, you'll catch a fish. These ones here are actually the thread fin shad. Again, one thirty second bounce jig head, let it sink, pop. Um, they're really good for smaller bass. I've even caught three to four pounders on them. Like I said, I, you know, ultralight fishing does not just catch small fish. But Bobby Garland is a really good bait. These ones here I've actually had for a minute, but I'm going to break them out this year to try to try to see what they're about. This is a curly tail shad from Crane Base, I believe is what it's called. And it doesn't have a color on it, so I'm just going to assume it's like a... A pearl black and blue or pearl blue with kind of like a I don't know like a baby blue sparkle in it but these look pretty nice I've got fish on similar baits to this I can't wait to throw these out on the ultra light again the same way with the Bobby Garland 130 second pound these ones you can swim a little quicker just because the curly tail on it will actually vibrate imitating a bait fish and I've got a lot of faith in them so I can't wait to break them out this year now getting on to the fun part of everything. One of my favorite baits to throw, a weightless yum dinger. You cannot go wrong with a weightless worm bait. This one here is the this is summer gill. So it's kinda like a blue back with a green belly. It's got a lot of flake in there, so it does shimmer a little bit. I throw these weightless, just let them sink to the bottom, give them twitches. You can vary up the retrieve however you like. But a weightless worm will always catch you fish. It doesn't matter. Um, these I will pretty much throw in a lot clearer water just because they are a little more natural. So you wouldn't expect, you know, as many hookups in dark water or dirty water, even stained water as much. But I've got a lot of faith in these. I really can't wait to throw these. Um, they may be one of my new favorite baits. But here we go. On to my hands down favorite bait. No matter what condition what water color anything like that what temperature i will always be throwing a camo yum dinger this was the five inch or five inch variation i'll rig this up on like a three uh three yacht um ewg hook weightless i'll let it sink to the bottom give it a couple twitches you know sometimes i'll pull it up to maybe a foot off the bottom just where it has a suspending presentation for a second to hit any of those fish that are just chilling in the mid column but these guys as you can tell definitely one of my favorite baits. Uh, I make sure whenever I find them, I buy as many as I can because you never know. You know, I, It took me like four months to find nine packs of these things, so they go pretty quick because they are pretty juicy little baits. But I love using these, and it's caught me so many fish that I can't even count. Majority of the fish that are on my fish brain now, if you haven't seen that, go down to fish brain, real to real fish, and make sure to subscribe to that as well, and you can see multiple catches i've caught on these things they just come in clutch so much so this is pretty much the arsenal that i'm going to uh pull out in 2021 you know a couple rods a couple reels um a ton of baits that i'm hoping to put out on the water get to use see which ones have the best action for me um i'm pretty sure on all of them that i'm going to be able to catch fish but anyways thank you guys for watching along hopefully some of these baits you know kind of piques your interest get you a little bit into it find you a couple of them you know just get out on the water test and maybe who knows you'll catch your pb on one <laughs> but uh anyways until next time guys go down there and hit that subscribe button leave a like let me know which one of these baits you want to see works first in the spring and as always keep it real keep it safe and go catch you guys some pond pickles have fun peace <laughs>